Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Sainsbury. I work in marketing here at Johnston in Auburn, New York. Uh, we're streaming live from our solution center uh, here at the Johnston headquarters. Uh, also joining me is Tiffany Rotts uh, from the marketing department, as well as Mike May, uh, CEO of Johnston. Uh, the, uh, the guest presenter that we have today um, is Nate Clemmer. Uh, Nate is CEO of Cinetech Solutions based out of based out of Pennsylvania. And we've gotten to know Nate really over this, this past year. Uh, Nate helped develop a product uh, from Cinetech called Entry, uh, which he'll be speaking to you about today. Uh, Entry in, in the year 2019 uh, was the, they earned the 2019 ISSA Innovation of the Year Award at the ISSA show in North America in, in Las Vegas. And uh, here at Johnson, it was a product that certainly caught our eye being based here in the Northeast. And we're uh, very proud to, uh, to introduce Nate and have him share more about his product. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to toss it over to Mike May, uh, CEO of Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to honor, uh, be honored to, to uh, host this uh, webinar with, uh, with Nate Clemmer. And uh, we've had some great success in our college arena and uh, at Wegmans as well. Uh, so we, uh, we were excited when Nate uh, brought this to us. And, and uh, so this is one of a few uh, webinars that we, that we plan on, on uh, hosting in, in the future. So thanks again, and uh, you know, any questions come up, you can uh, you can send them to us, and we'll hopefully can answer them. And uh, but we uh, expect to follow up from uh, from you know our Johnson staff as we move forward. So thanks again. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Mark, can you guys see my screen on your end, Mark or Tiffany? No, not yet. Um, have you guys given me the ability to share the screen? Here, let me got. I got it. Um, let me just flip this on. Just tell me when you can see it. Yep. Got it. You're good. Clean and green. Uh, you got it. Perfect. That's always um, when you're getting ready to do a presentation, that starting is always sort of like the heartbeat racing. So thank you everyone for your time here. As Mark mentioned, my name is Nate Clemmer. Um, and we're going to talk today about clean and green de-icing practices. And so I'm going to move pretty quick through this. This is it's a bigger topic. And for those of you who live in climates where snow happens for multiple months in the winter, you're gonna be very familiar with the things we're talking about here. Um, and so, you know, I wanna start by just setting a backdrop that, you know, if this was a family feud game and the question was on the board was, why are ice melt products used in the winter? And there was a survey of a hundred people, the, the first and only answer would be to keep people safe. And so as we talk about um, clean and green, best practices for winter maintenance, we always wanna keep in mind that our primary goal is to keep people safe. And so all the other things that we're gonna focus on are always based upon with safety being first. But you know, the best way I can really describe how we try to approach winter maintenance is um, to take a restart, like almost like a reboot on how we do things to begin with. So 60 years ago, someone either in New Hampshire or New York, we don't really know, decided that throwing salt at ice to melt it to keep people safe was a good idea. And it was a good idea in terms of safety. But like that one decision for safety created like a spiral of 12 unintended consequences. There's an environmental impact, which we'll talk about, harm to pets, damage to metals, ruined floors, which we'll talk about, dead grass, ruined shoes, damaged concrete, like the list goes on and on, all in the interest of safety, right? So when we think about what we're talking about today, it's sort of like, what if we could just call timeout, rethink what we've been doing for the last 60 years and try something different? And so one of the areas of focus that we're really gonna dial in on today is the tracking. Um, and the issues associated with the granular chloride salts related to tracking. And just so I'm using language that everyone is in tune with, when I say granular chloride, I'm obviously talking about something that's a granular, but the word chloride, whether it's sodium chloride, which is rock salt, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, potassium chloride, they're all chloride salts. And they're all in the category that we're trying to avoid. And so some people will say, I don't use rock salt, I use calcium chloride. Well, it's still a chloride. So um, I want to also say that our company is called Cin Cinetech Solutions, but we have another company called Secure Winter Products, 
um, who is the name you might recognize in the market. We make a lot of what I'll call their traditional products. We're not anti-salt for a second. There is a time and a place for it. But when we're trying to fix some of the problems, uh, we're looking for better solutions than just pulling the salt lever every time. So tracking is obviously a big issue. Um, for a lot of people, they refer to the tracking of the chloride salts as the worst part of winter. So pictures like the ones you're gonna see here are just common uh, through across New York state. This is just what happens. Even when we're careful, this is what floors look like. I mean, uh, it's like a highlight reel. This is like a CVS pharmacy where it looked like someone took a 50 pound bag of calcium chloride and just exploded it by the front door of that building. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a transition, you know, carpeting in, a, in an airlock and, you know, it's just a mess. Um, this is a fitness studio where they've got carpeting on one side, almost like a vinyl tile floor in the middle and rubber matting on the other side. The, the, the person who maintains the floors in this building, you know, talked to me for an hour about how much of a hassle it is in winter. And so this tracking issue is a big problem. And, you know, when I talk to snow contractors about this issue of tracking, it's like out of their minds. When I talk to facility managers, custodial professionals, like this idea of tracking is very much in the front of their minds. Um, particularly this winter, when we think about COVID and we think about resources in a building that are doing other things like disinfecting, it's like, who's got the time to clean up the granular mess by the door? Um, and so we wanna talk about specifically, what are the issues with tracking? Cause it's a multiple layer problem. First of all, we have this, you know, calling it like chalky residue. Um, if you're old like me, you have a chalkboard at your, you know, school where some kid would clean it with water and then five minutes later when it dried, it was still chalky. Um, that's what we deal with on our floors. So a lot of times we're using neutralizers and things like that to get that chalky residue up. Um, the other issue that we have is just the granule residues themselves. Um, they're abrasive on floors so they can cause scratching and things of that nature. Um, they're in the runners, you gotta vacuum them out. I've talked to some custodial staff that'll tell me how many hundreds of pounds they vacuum of salt in the course of a winter. It's hard on the equipment. It's a lot of labor. It's just a mess. Um, we have issues with certain de-icers um, are either hygroscopic or high or um, endothermic or exothermic, basically. Products that are exothermic, um, like calcium chloride and magnesium chloride, they're great ice melts, but the way they melt is they attract moisture to themselves and then that starts them melting which is great outdoors. But when those granules are indoors, they still attract moisture to themselves. So if they're not cleaned up quickly, they start to liquefy. And when they liquefy, they become like an oily residue. So this ice melt that was outside to keep people safe tracks inside and if not cleaned up, creates a secondary slip hazard on floors. So we don't want that. Um, and so these are all issues that we see in terms of tracking. Another big one are the chloride salts, you know, um, causing damage to carpeting. A lot of times there's de-icers and we want to make them look really pretty on the sidewalk. So they're like really blue or really orange. Well, they also will stain the carpets. Um, so that's a problem. And so you add all these things up and it's like, man, it's, it's just a lot. Um, and so we worked with ISSA's Cleaning Management Institute to get an idea of like how much money our building spending per winter, or I should say per event. This is not per snow event, per salt event. How much money are we spending per salt event, per entrance, just short term, labor, bucket, mop, not strip and refinish, not matting, but it's about $50 per entrance per salt event. So it gets really expensive, which is one of the reasons why we created this product entry that Mark referred to. The best way I can explain it is entry is gonna track into your buildings like water. It's no more or less slippery than water. You can see the, the entry logo through the backside of this pill jar. Um, it's gonna behave just like water. Um, it also has a near neutral pH, just like water. So the neutralizers and things like that aren't needed. Um, and, you know, we did really well with this product um, over the last number of years. Um, but this time last year, we entered the ISSA Innovation of the Year uh, Award. And there's like 40 some odd other products. And some of them you guys may be familiar with. I mean, these are great products. I believe in entry, but I honestly didn't think we would have much of a chance of winning. But once you know it, uh, an ice melt won their Innovation of the Year Award. Um, and again, I believe in our product, but I also think robots that clean toilets are pretty cool too, uh, but an ice melt one. And I think it just speaks to the pain of the tracking. Um, and so, you know, when we think about 
winter maintenance and we think about all the pain points, if there's anything that we can do to avoid or eliminate the tracking, we want to be all about that. And obviously, we're not going to compromise safety, which we'll talk about a little bit more. The other unintended consequence of chloride, granular chloride salts, is our planet. You know, tracking's one unintended consequence. Our planetary health is another one. The biggest issue is related to our fresh water. And especially in New York, especially around places like the Finger Lakes and things of that nature, um, the best way I can explain it without getting into a lot of scientific detail is our water bodies are a lot like our human bodies. Some salt on our food is not a problem, right? It's good, I love it. Um, but a, a diet that consists of ham and French fries over 30 years is probably not a great thing. It's the same issue when we use too much chloride salt. It, we turn fresh water salty. And so that makes it harder for you know fish and frogs and other things to live in places where they should be able to live. Also, from a drinking water standpoint, we don't want you know you know the the you know a glass of water to have the equivalent sodium as a bag of potato chips. And so this is becoming a bigger and bigger problem, particularly in states like New York, because we've used a lot of salt for a long time. And it's easy to blame the highway people. And there's room for improvement there. But a lot of the issues we see are traced back to private properties because we use way too much. I mean, we put down so much that, you know, if you don't hear it crunch, somehow that's a problem. Um, and that creates other issues. And so entry being 100% chloride free is a major benefit for the environment. But we don't want products that are just chloride free. We want products that are also readily biodegradable. So they break down really quickly. Entry is both. It's readily biodegradable and chloride free, which is why about a year ago, entry became the only ice melt on the planet during Green Seal certification. And this was really important to me personally, because that was one of the main reasons why we created entry was to give a better planetary option. But more importantly, you know, there's no rules and regulations about what you can claim for de-icers. And so we see a lot of what I'll call exaggerated you know, claims. And so Green Seal allows customers to not have to take my word for it or Johnston's word for it. You can look at the Green Seal standard and you can see that entry met that standard and you can make your own determination then about safety around the planet. And so just something to be mindful of, you, know, you can look at a de-icer um, that's gonna keep people safe, eliminate the tracking and also be a plus one for our planet. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on this. I could do 30 minutes just on these other topics, but these are un other unintended consequences beyond the planet, beyond the tracking of the chloride salts, the pets, that's an issue with the chlorides, the damaged metals, metal railings, metal doors, people's shoes being obliterated, dead grass, dead plants, it's really dead soil. Um, and then the concrete's another one. This is all unintended consequences of chloride salts, entry being 100% chloride free, uh, makes it a major benefit. So if you remember in the beginning, I said, you know, number one reason we use a chloride salt is to keep people safe. Non-tracking is great, chloride free, readily biodegradable, all great. But if it's not going to keep people safe, then we really have defeated kind of the initial purpose. So when I say performance, what I'm really talking about is, um, is how well does it do at keeping people safe? And so Entry works different than any other product on the market. I mentioned earlier that other ice melts are either endothermic or exothermic. Entry melts what we call ionic. It's different than anything else out there. And this is an, like an animated under the microscope visual of how entry melts. And so this is a water molecule, H2O. When water freezes, there's these frozen hydrogen bonds that are formed. We would refer to this as the ice lattice. When entry is applied, what it does is it breaks apart the molecular structure of the ice lattice. That's how it works. It's this ionic form of melt. It's different than anything else on the market. Um, and again, we make a lot of other products. They're endothermic, they're exothermic, they're just like everything else. This is ionic. And the reason why that's so significant is when you see entry melt with your own eyes, it's gonna look like we sprayed hot water. That's the impact of how it melts. But that's the ionic action that I just referred to. So just to so you could see it with your own eyes, this is a pay, shoveled paper walk. Um, it's not particularly cold in this illustration, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll recognize that once this surface is shoveled, it's now more slippery than if we had done nothing. So if we don't put down some sort of ice melt, this thing's going to flash freeze and it's going to be a skating rink. But as soon as you see entry applied, 
you're going to see that white surface go wet. Once that is wet, it's no longer slippery. It's as as easy to walk on as if it had just rained. There's no more slipperiness to that whatsoever. Those areas that didn't melt right away because there was a little bit more accumulation on the uneven paper edge, that's slushy, that's not slippery and that'll be gone in a minute or two. So it almost does look like we're spraying hot water, but five years into this with you know many of the customers, Mike May mentioned and others, like we wouldn't get away with selling hot water um, and be, be around this long. And so really, really, really fast. And if we think about speed in the context of safety, you know, we want ice melts to work fast. We don't want to throw down a rock salt, a calcium chloride, and then set and watch our clock until it finally melts. We want it fast. And so this is a set of stairs that had been shoveled. There were some steps that came up with the stairs before we had a chance to apply entry. You'll see how fast that white goes wet. We're not over applying, which we see a lot of on stairs. Um, and basically, as soon as we're wet, we're safe. And, you know, there you go. So again, really, really, really fast. And so, again, safety, number one priority, speed of melt is a huge part of safety. And you can see how fast entry works. The other thing about entry, or any product for that matter, when we think of safety, there's two criteria, speed and likelihood of refreeze. Number one reason that we see refreeze, I'm sorry, number one reason we see slip and fall is because of refreeze. So we put out a product, it's 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It melts snow or ice. We think everything's good. We go home, we go inside, um, temperatures drop. And keep in mind that when a product melts something, it's diluted. So temperatures drop and now all of a sudden what was melted refreezes. With entry, it's maximum melts to temperature. The lowest it can go is negative 63 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the jug, we got to get it to negative 63 degrees Fahrenheit to freeze it. This is truthful, but it's a little bit of a circus trick to claim. So we don't really promote negative 63 because entry like any other ice melt, once it melts snow or ice, it's now diluted. It's not going to melt to negative 63 degrees. It's refreeze point when applied properly is about negative 20 degrees. If someone under applies, we're going to see refreeze around zero. So normally just to be safe, we say if temperatures are going to go below zero, make another application. So really, really fast and chance of refreeze, almost nothing. Um, and so from a safety standpoint, there really isn't anything better on the market than entry. So in addition to the chloride free benefits of not tracking, better for the planet, all those other things, we also have got a great ice melt that works fast to really low temperatures, but it's not perfect. I'd love to tell you that it was. I would love to tell you that we created a product that will never, ever, ever need to be used. It could always be used. Unfortunately, there are a couple of what I'll call Achilles heels. They're kind of kryptonite when it comes to entry. One of them is that if you've got a heavy pack of snow or ice, so you've got five inches of snow, and then a bunch of kids say trample it down, and then you go to shovel and you're left with an inch of ice. If you sprayed entry on that inch of ice, it's not gonna be very effective. It's gonna run off before it has a chance to melt through. But you saw in those videos, that clean surface, we can spray it, it's great. Black ice, it's great. You know, up until like a couple, two, two to three thicknesses of cardboard, it's great. You get an inch of ice, not great. We would say throw a granular chloride at that. Second thing is um, you gotta use it when temperatures are below freezing. A lot of times we'll get snow early in the season that I call warm snow. Looks like snow, but feels like rain. Um, really, really, you don't need to use anything because temperatures are above freezing. But if you got to put something down just to kind of like make it look like you're doing something, throw a granular product. The problem with entry in that type of event is it, that snow is already so wet and moist with entry being applied on it, you're not gonna notice much impact. And we also really point this out it, because it's often the first snow event, we're gonna get you a sample. You can use it on that type of wet snow, but just know like kind of, hey, Nate told us that it wasn't gonna be great here. The colder, the better, but definitely above freezing, not gonna be awesome. But on the backside of that storm, when temperatures often drop, go ahead, shovel the slush to the side, that messy stuff, and then spray entry after everything's done and then prevent the refreeze. That's a great way to use entry. Again, keeping people safe, eliminating the tracking and all the other unintended consequences of the chloride salts. So we've got another product, a granular product called Ally G, 
which Johnston has access to, which is normally what we would recommend when we're not recommending entry. This is our winter weather toolbox. It's on our website. A lot of people like this for training. It's a, it's a pretty user-friendly way of knowing what to use. You'll notice that entry is the go-to for most of the situations, but there are a couple times where we recommend Ally G. It is a chloride-based salt. So again, I mentioned we're not anti-salt, but this particular salt is treated with entry and it's designed to be a particle size that's gonna reduce tracking, gonna reduce hygroscopy, you know, that slipperiness inside of buildings. It has a color to it, but it's a, it's a pink color out of the ground. We don't add anything to it. Think Himalayan salt, like if you ever see that in a grocery store. Um, and then it's our pod de-icing technology. So again, this is a chloride salt. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's something that it isn't. There's nothing wrong with salt. We just wanna use it when it's appropriate. And we wanna use particles that aren't gonna be tracking as much that you know are gonna be uniform in size. And we could talk more about this product, but it's a great kind of second tool out of the box. So non-tracking is great, better for the planet, great. Chloride-free, great. Works fast to low temperatures, great. But like, what is this gonna cost us? And so when we think about entries cost, you know, we really wanna encourage people to think about using entry in the first 15 feet as you enter or leave a building. Um, ISSA's Cleaning Management Institute would have taught us that 90% of the tracking inside of buildings is coming from this first 15 feet. So this is the money spot. We started calling it the DMZ, the demilitarized zone before North and South Korea started being in the news every day. But like, if you're like Mike May and you're a golfer, this is your, this is your putting green. Like this is where you put the money because this is where the tracking is. This is where the high value metals are. This is where the pets are coming and going. This is where people's shoes are coming and going. This is where the stairs are. The likelihood of refreeze and slip and fall is here. So let's really nail this first 15 feet. This is the money shot. And if we assume this is four feet wide by 15 feet, let's call that 60 square feet, the most expensive price that you would pay is $1.65 in this area to eliminate that $50 per entrance per event that we talked about earlier. So that's a really good deal. Um, our customers typically will start with this first 15 feet in mind, but will expand it at least 50 feet. Because if you go 50 feet, you're gonna eliminate 100% of the tracking. But most people will do all sidewalk areas and then handicapped parking spots is another big one that we see. But, you know, get your head around it in the first 15 feet. You're going to get a sample. If you don't see the value of entry in that first 15 feet, I don't know that we can really help you beyond that. So start there and then allow yourself to kind of blossom um, at, from that point. So price wise, you know, we've sold in two by two and a halves, 55 gallon drums, 250 gallon totes. You can see all the numbers here. The best way to really explain it is compared to what you're using now. So if you're using a granular chloride salt and you buy one case of entry, it'd be like paying $16.50 for that bag. If you're buying a truckload of granular chloride salts um, and you were buying it and say then 250 gallon totes, it'd be like paying nine, 10 bucks a bag. So if you're using bulk road salt for your sidewalks, entry is gonna be more expensive. If you're using a quality sidewalk de-icer, traditionally blended granular chloride, entry material wise is gonna be similar to what you're spending. That's the feedback that we get, but all the savings of the non-tracking, the property preservation, you know, those are all pluses. So, um, you know, definitely have a lot of users out there that have been successful, um, but it is different. You know, that's something that we have to help people understand is it's different and different is bad sometimes, right? Like the person who's in charge of the facility may think this is awesome, but if the person who works night shift who started two weeks ago doesn't like it, or probably more likely the person who's done the same thing for 30 years doesn't like it, we're gonna be kind of stuck. Um, so this was a problem back in the early stages of entry is getting adoption. We could get it at the top, but till you worked it down, like, you know, not everyone wants to change, right? Um, so we came up with the term innovation squared, uh, which is basically what we look at as saying when a better product is married with a better process. Because let's face it, forget the fact that granular chloride salts have all these other unintended consequences. They're also a hassle. You got to rip a bag. You got to pour it in a spreader. And then you push that product out. And then you need another bag. Guess where that is? Back where you came from. So you got to go back, get the other bag. And you do this 10 times and it's a nightmare. It takes a long time. Um, it's not particularly fun to pour the bags in and have all the dust come up in your face. So we created some battery powered spray equipment. 
um, that makes the whole process of applying entry much better. Um, so this is a two gallon sprayer, Johnston stocks this. Um, it does come with a manual pump, but what most people do is they upgrade it to our Branch Creek pump free. So the manual pump goes away because pumping is not much fun. And this other bat lithium battery that is in the handle. So the battery is in the handle, screws in. You push a button and it pressurizes that tank. So now I don't need to pump. And a two gallon sprayer filled with entry is gonna give me the equivalent coverage of four 50 pound bags of sidewalk salt. So I've got to rip and tear and pour and then go back four times to do what I can do by pouring two gallons into a sprayer and then going out and doing it. And so very, very fast and not just fast, easier. Uh, you're gonna find that your team will love this. So just to give you an example of what this looks like, again, you got a sidewalk that's been shoveled, get used to seeing that white residue because that's what entry smokes. Um, and you can see how fast we're melting through. Uh, this applicator could actually move a little quicker. He's going a little slow, but it's still plenty fast. Um, he's not pumping. Um, he's gonna go about 50 feet from the door. Um, and here in about five seconds, you'll see kind of where, what that surface area looks like from where he started. But again, no pumping. Um, so that's gonna be, you know, about 45 seconds later, we have that picture on the right. That's what we started with. And again, no pumping, really fast. Um, if you decide that you want to go further than, say, 50 feet from the door, um, we've got another sprayer that's become really popular. It's a 12-gallon lithium battery-powered sprayer as well. Um, the power to move it is going to come from your legs, but the battery will power a boom in the front that allows you to spray between three and five feet. You also have 10 feet of detachable hose that you can use to hit tops of curb and things of that nature. Um, and so 12 gallons of entry is the equivalent of 24 50 pound bags of salt. So we have a lot of customers that'll buy that 250 gallon tote and they'll gravity feed into this 12 gallon sprayer in less than a minute. And think about 24 bags ripping and tearing. Um, it takes a long time. And so same concept, you know, we got this shoveled sidewalk area, but now we're gonna deliver it out the front of a boom. Same effect, that white goes wet, it's safe. And now we're just, this is just another delivery mechanism, but the product's gonna work the same regardless of what we put it through. The nozzle is important, but the sprayer it comes out of doesn't really matter. Now we recommend the battery powered stuff because you know it's just kind of what we've seen work over time. Um, but you know that's up to you, what you wanna do. Uh, Johnston has all these access to all these products and we'll also offer some rebates through Johnston where you know if you buy at least 50 gallons of entry, we can help you on the equipment side. I'm going to finish by just saying, you know, we, we promised a sample to anyone who participates and we thank you all for your time. We're at about 25 minutes right now. So this is the sample you're going to get. You're going to get a two gallon sprayer um, with the manual pump on top. It's going to have the right nozzle on it and everything to apply entry the right way. So you don't need to worry about finding the sprayer and you're going to get a gallon of entry. So it's about the equivalent of two 50 pound bags is what you're going to get. So you got a nice sample to play around with. Um, and you know, experiment, you know, experiment on the things that I told you won't work well, and then obviously do it on the things that we work well. And if you're interested, um, we can upgrade the sample. We can include the battery powered sprayer. That's an additional $79. Um, but that would be something you can decide to upgrade to if you desire. That would just be a matter of communicating that through Johnston. So with that, that's all I had in terms of presentation. I thank everyone for their time. If there's any questions, we can take them now. Great. Well, thank you very much, Nate. Uh, the one thing that you can do uh, to anyone that's on the webinar, uh, if you look down at the bottom of your Zoom, if you're not familiar with using Zoom, there is a chat button down there. Uh, so feel free to uh, type in any questions. Uh, Tiffany will be monitoring the, uh, the chat line there. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Tiffany, did you have a, a question for Nate? They kind of get yeah, all on? We, we do have a question lined up. Um... We're looking to know what the shelf life is on entry. So there is no, I guess you could say there's unlimited shelf life or no shelf. Life. It doesn't expire. That's probably the best way to put it. So we have a lot of customers that will leave it in the sprayers that they finished last winter with the product in. Um, and then, you know, when they need it again next winter, it's going to be fine. We have some parts of the country where there isn't a lot of snow every year, you know, so they might go three years without a snow. Think like Atlanta they'll buy a product like entry just so that it's there and not in a brick 
when they need it because obviously the granular chloride salts if you let them sit long enough they will turn into a brick so we do have a question from a customer asking if they can use the nozzle on a sprayer that they have um, I'd be more interested in having you use the sprayer you already have, but let us get you a nozzle. Um, we have no problem shipping customers nozzles for free if they really want to use a sprayer they already have. It's, un it's likely that you don't have a nozzle that would do the job to the level that I think would give you the satisfaction of the product. So we'd be glad to send you a nozzle if you've got sprayers that you want to use. And we do have another one. Um, how does it work on new concrete? New concrete. So my biggest concern with new concrete is usually the person who poured it. Um, and then if there's a problem, you know, everyone and their brother gets has get pulled into the center. So we have some data. Um, there is an engineering standard ASTM C672, I think is what it is. It's an evaluation of scaling on new concrete from de-icers. And entry does as well as any other product on the market um, but you can't say it's 100% safe on new concrete. The reality is if you put tap water through the same study, it still would have some scaling. So we can provide that data to anybody who wants it, but we, you know, we got to set a certain expectation that there's a good chance that the issue, if there's a problem with concrete, is more the person who poured it than the product. With that being said, at least we've got some data to show that over 50 thaw and refreeze cycles, which is what the standard requires, that there really isn't anything better that you can do. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, unfortunately, there is no, there's no magic bullet there. <clears throat> uh, next one up we have, uh, can I use entry as a pretreatment before the snow? You can, um, you know, and I think you know, I mentioned one of the weaknesses of entry, one of the kryptonites is that heavy pack of snow or ice. So you get five inches of snow, you know, let's just say a bunch of feet trample it down or tires trample it down. And now you're left with that inch of ice. You may want to use entry. Most people want to use entry every time because of all the benefits we just talked about. So one of the times that they can't is that heavy pack. And so what a lot of facilities will do is to avoid that heavy pack, they'll use entry as a pretreatment. So um, I can actually, I think I have a slide here. Um, if you can still see this. One of the misconceptions of using any product as a pretreatment is people think that like, oh, I put down a pretreatment, it's going to melt two inches of falling snow. If it ever does that, it's probably because you put down so much and temperatures are like 31 degrees and the pavement's 46 degrees. Generally speaking, you're going to melt a quarter to a half inch of falling snow with a pretreatment of basically any product, including entry. Um, the goal of pretreatment is not how much snow can I melt that's falling. That's a misconception. You'll get some, and that's not a bad thing, but it's not a reason to pretreat. A reason to pretreat is like Teflon on a pan. It's like putting butter or oil on a pan to prevent sticking. If you've ever made eggs on like a, on a, on a cast iron pot, you know, it sticks if you don't put something down and it's a pain to clean it up. Think of entry or any pretreatment as that Teflon. It's that oil, it's that butter so that when you flip the pancake, it actually flips. That's what we do with a de-icer when we pre-treat, because we're trying to eliminate that hard pack, that, that, you know, that, that stuff you end up having to throw a lot of salt on or pick at to clear. So this is just an, a visual so you can get an idea what I'm talking about. Um, we have an untreated area of sidewalk, an area that was treated with entry, an area that's untreated again, and an area that's treated with entry. Got about two inches of snow here, so it's not a lot. But then we trampled it with people's feet. And you can see in the treated area, we're actually starting to see, we can see a little bit of the boot prints, you know, down to the, to the concrete. But these other areas untreated, we don't have any of that. So now watch what happens when we shovel. Untreated area in the back, treated, untreated, treated. The untreated area is probably going to, it's right on the edge of entry maybe working or not working. We might need a granular, it's right on the edge. But if we would have treated, pre-treated with entry, these areas where we did pre-treat, we could just come back and spray those areas. We're golden. We don't use a granular, we don't have the tracking, we don't have the dead grass, the pets, all that stuff. But if we wouldn't have pre-treated in this exact same situation, we probably would have had to use a granular. I don't know if that makes any sense. That's probably like a, that's like a junior or sophomore year class. It's something you can graduate to. Okay, so we've got three more questions sure. uh, coming through the pipeline. Once applied, does the snow continue to melt during snowfall? 
Um, it will at some point in time with any de-icer, including entry, it's going to stop working. Um, temperature and dilution are what's going to drive that. So the colder the temperatures, the more moisture that's falling, the sooner it's going to, I'll say, dilute out. Um, so it will ultimately dilute out. You're going to find that entry is going to do as well as any product in terms of preventing that above 15 degrees, you start going below 15 degrees, other products will stop working much sooner than entry. The one thing I will say is if you ever do a side-by-side -side of say a granular chloride at entry, there's a good chance and you say, oh my goodness, the granular chloride is doing a better job of preventing falling snow. There's a good chance, you know, the person who did it used like a big gulp cup and they threw out the chloride salt that way and we sprayed entry at the right rate. So we're not comparing apples to apples. We're comparing entry at one, one X rate versus a granular salt at seven times the recommended rate. If we want to be fair, we really should apply entry multiple times. So that's just something to be on the lookout for. Um, but yes, you'll, you will see it dilute out at some point, but it will do a good job until then. It kind of leads into the next question. How long will it continue to work before you need to reapply? It'll continue to work um, until there's additional moisture that would dilute it out. So one of the reasons snow contractors really love this product is if they shovel and clean up, then they apply entry, they go home, they don't send scouts back out. Normally they would, but they don't because entry will keep working regardless of how cold it gets until there's more moisture introduced. So that could be rain, it could be blowing snow, it could be further snow, anything. But you know, if there's a week in between an event before there's moisture again, entry is gonna still keep working regardless of what the temperatures are. Uh, then, then we have a question, how will it work on mats that are outside in the snow and ice? Good, that's a good question. So it's gonna work the same way as it would work on, I'll say concrete. Um, it actually works a little bit better because the mats aren't gonna be porous. So the less porous the surface is, the greater entry works in terms of speed. Um, you know, if you've got sidewalks, there's still some porosity in there, but those mats, we're typically, you're not seeing any porosity. Uh, we have a lot of people who have outdoor mats. Um, they'll shovel them and they'll spray entry on them, but people kind of start getting rid of those outdoor mats because a lot of times the reason they're using them is to prevent the tracking with entry. You're essentially eliminating that need for that mat. Hey, Nate, I, Nate, it's Mike May. Hey Mike. Just a question. You know, we're just talking about it. And I think one of your first slides, you mentioned that it's process more than anything, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like you just said it, and I think maybe that hit, hit the nail on the head, but, if we shovel first and, and apply second, we're going to have better results. I mean, that, that's, that's the sweet spot. I mean, you'd like to do that with any product. You like to just have it snow. You come in the next day, you shovel it, and you put down a de-icer. I mean, that's, that's the dream world. But unfortunately, with facilities, we don't live in that dream world. You know, we could be an urgent care facility, and we got five inches of snow coming in over the next four hours at an inch an hour, and we got to keep the surfaces safe all the time. So you know, we're gonna to have to keep treating throughout the storm and entry can do that. You can do that with a granular chloride too, but that's when the mess is, is at its worst. You know, when you pre-treat with a salt or you keep throwing salt throughout a storm, you know, I talk to custodial staff all the time. They say, when it stows, my job is, I come in, I shovel the sidewalk and I put down a de-icer. Then I go inside, take off my coat and then I clean it all up. And then I go back outside and I do it again. And I come back inside and I clean it all up. It's like, how does this make any sense? Why don't we just go outside, take care of the problem, you know, beginning of the day, throughout the day, whatever we need to do to keep it safe and clear and then not deal with it inside. Let's go disinfect something. Let's go deal with another area of need rather than spending the rest of the day with a mop. That's, that's sort of what we see as a best practice. Sure. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Nate. Uh, I think that's the end of our questions. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here at, at Johnson, uh, meeting a number of our customers. We also appreciate the offer for a, a free sample. I know Tiffany will be reaching out with details. So Tiffany, would you like to? I'll be reaching out to each of the organizations that uh, attended the live webinar and we'll find out where you want your entry bundle that to be delivered. 
Um, each organization is going to receive one of these bundles, but you do have the option, like Nate said, to upgrade to the battery operated pump sprayer. Okay. And if you have any further questions, uh, certainly you can reach out to your uh, your local Johnston sales rep, uh, or feel, always feel free to reach out to info at johnston.biz, and that will come to us here in marketing, and we'll be happy to uh, direct you to the right area. Uh, but on behalf of Johnston, Nate, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Everyone else, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much.